Do you wanna book more headshots? Click on the link in the description of this video to get the free PDF guide, five ways to book more headshots right now. Whether you're already in the headshot business or you wanna be, this guide will give you some practical, actionable tips to growing your headshot business that you can implement right away. Don't wait, click on the link and get your free guide right now. I am fully aware that this topic is gonna to ruffle some feathers. Like your favorite kind of pizza or your favorite Star Wars movie, camera settings can be pretty personal and have a lot of reasons behind them. I'm gonna start by telling you a secret that might ruin the whole video. There are no magic camera settings for headshots or anything else. There's only the marriage between what you intend to accomplish and how your camera settings can help you make that happen. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a specific scenario, tell you what I'm trying to accomplish, and how I use my camera settings to help me do that. Seem fair? Remember that in all cases, when it comes to any kind of portrait, my camera is set to M for manual. You have four critical camera settings when you're shooting. Aperture, shutter speed, ISO or ISO, and your white balance. Let's get the white balance out of the way first. I never shoot in auto white balance when it comes to headshots in my studio. I'm typically shooting with strobes, and they generally produce a light that's close to daylight color temperature, so I set my white balance to 5600K unless I'm in mixed lighting conditions. When I'm in mixed lighting conditions, I use a color checker to create a custom white balance in camera. In either case, I always shoot a gray target so that I can tweak the color balance in post-production. I've got a video you can check out on exactly how I do that he here in the description, there'll be a link there too. This leaves me with three main settings in the exposure triangle, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Each one of these settings affects how light or dark the image is. So since they all affect the brightness, I choose the camera settings I use based on the secondary effect each setting has. Aperture changes the depth of field. Shutter speed affects motion in the image and can control how much ambient light gets in. ISO affects the noise level and dynamic range. Think of it like this. There are multiple ways to get a correct exposure in any situation. How the image looks and feels changes depending on how you combine those three settings based on the secondary effects they have. If your priority is getting a really shallow depth of field, you might choose to shoot at f2 and then just adjust the other settings to get a correct exposure while keeping the aperture at f2. If you're shooting at a football game and your priority is freezing the action, you might choose a higher shutter speed like 1 1500th of a second. So let's look at how I set my camera and why for a basic studio headshot. My intent is to create a studio headshot with enough depth of field that the image is sharp in the mask of the face and is sharp all the way around the edges. We replace backgrounds a lot digitally to give clients more options. And shooting at a really shallow depth of field makes background removal more difficult sometimes. So for the aperture, I choose F8. For the shutter speed, unless I shoot in high speed sync mode, I'm mostly limited by the sync speed of the camera and strobes I'm using. For Canon, that's 1 200th of a second. If I shoot higher than that, I could catch the shutter as it moves across the sensor, wrecking the image. I also wanna keep my shutter speed high enough to keep the ambient light in my studio from affecting the image. The sweet spot I found there is about 160th of a second. For ISO, I want it to be as low as I can to keep out detectable noise in the file, but I want it high enough so that I don't have to power my lights up too much, which can drain the batteries faster. With my R5, I find that ISO 320 or 400 is just about the right spot. Now that I have my camera settings based on the desired effect, I use my light meter, yes, a light meter, to measure my lights and adjust the power and distance of them until the lights match my camera settings. Once that's done, I'm ready to shoot. Now wait a minute, you might say. You lock in your camera settings, then adjust the lights to match the camera? Yes! That might seem backwards to some of you watching this, and I get that. Adjusting the camera settings to the light definitely makes sense when it comes to available light portraits, but I'm not doing that here. I have specific settings chosen for a specific reason based on the requirements of the job. In that case, the lights should serve the camera, not the other way around. That's one of the major benefits of shooting with strobes, complete control of the light. So that's it. You may choose to do stuff differently based on your needs, based on your style, but hopefully that peek into my thought process was helpful in getting you started. I'm gonna make more videos like this based on different shooting scenarios, so be sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you can be the first to know when I do. 
Thanks for watching.